Hello, Calculus students and general seekers of truth. Let us take a look at an example here of Riemann sums, which we've been talking about here in this series of videos. And uh, let's take a look at a case where we're not given a particular function um, formula. We're just given a table. So here's the problem statement. Let f of x be a differentiable function on this interval, and f prime be positive on the same interval, basically, a close versus an open. The table above gives some values, and we want to estimate uh, the definite integral from 2 to 13 using the trapezoidal Riemann sum with the value intervals indicated in the table, and then determine if the actual value is greater than or less than our approximation. So what I like to do is just kind of sketch out what this graph looks like approximately. So let's see, at our increments here are at 2, 3, 5, and man, this is not drawn to scale, 8, and 13. Our points here are at 1, 4, 2, Uh, 3, and 6. Okay. And you don't have to do with this with every single problem that you get like this. You'll get the hang of it after some, some good practice. But um, it, for the first one, it's important to do this. And we want to know the trapezoidal sum. Well, the first trapezoidal in other words, we're making a, a series of trapezoids here. So this is going to be our first trapezoid, which is the one between uh, 2 and 3. All right, so I've jotted this down. The, the area of the trapezoid is 1 half the height. And keep in mind, the height is actually this horizontal segment here. Uh, times base 1, which is 4, oh, I'm sorry, which is 2, this is a, oh, excuse me, that should be a 1. What am I doing? This should be a 1. Okay. And again, this is really not drawn to scale. Let me correct this mess here. That was intended to be a 1. Okay. So this this height this length right here is one of the bases, which is one, and then the second base here, which is four. And so this is our first trapezoid. Now our second trapezoid gets a little bit uh, hairy. We can see here that the formula is still the same: one half the height, which is this length right here, which is a length of two times base 1, which is this one up here, plus base 2, which is this length right here, which is a negative number. Now, I know this may seem like a ridiculous thing to, uh, to have two bases that are negatives, but in the world of definite integrals, it still works because uh, what we're doing here is we're, we're essentially taking an average of the uh, the the first base and the second base. Okay? And it just so happens that one of those bases is a negative number. Okay? And keep in mind that negative of the area or it definite integrals with negative values do have some practical applications like with velocity and acceleration and s similar types of examples. So f base 1 here is 4. Base 2 is negative 2. And then similarly, the next one we're going to we're going to have a height here from three from five to eight. So that's one half, and the height here is three. Base one is negative two. That's this length here, and base two here is three. Plus the last one, and back to make things making geometric sense now. This last trapezoid here is one half this base rate this height right here is five uh, the first base is three 
and the second base is 6. And we're going to add all of this up. Okay? Now, before we actually do add all this up, I want to point out a few important things. First, notice that the intervals are the... Uh, I, I don't want to highlight this part. Excuse me. The intervals that we're dealing with here, these are unequal. And that's perfectly fine. We do a lot of problems with equally spaced intervals because that's a little bit more convenient. But in this case, it's, 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 we're given the data that we're given, and these, these intervals are unequal. So from 2 to 3, that's an interval of 1. From 3 to 5, that's an interval of 2. From 5 to 8, that's an interval of 3. And from 8 to 13, that's an interval of 5. Okay, so again, the intervals here are totally unequal. And that's OK. You just have to be careful to set this up. and. So, you know, let's let's just compute this. This is one we they all have a one half in them, so we can factor all that out. Uh this is one times one plus four, so that's a five plus two times four minus two, so that's a four, plus three times negative two plus three, so that's just the three, plus uh five times 3 plus 6, so that's 9 times 5 is 45. Right. And so this is 1 half, and let's do all this arithmetic. 9 plus 3 is 12, and uh, uh, 45 is 57. So this is essentially 57 halves. Okay. So there you have it. So if we compute these areas, we essentially have... Um, a value of 57 halves. Now, that answers the first question. Let's look at the second question. Is the actual value greater than or less than our approximation? Well, how are we supposed to do that when we don't really know anything about the graph? Well, the fact is we do know something about the graph. We know that f prime is positive. And keep in mind, if f prime is positive, then that means f is concave up which is very convenient for us so if we look at any generic graph if you have something that's concave up keep in mind that the trapezoidal rule or the trapezoidal Riemann sum uh, this is how we would calculate it well you see here that the trapeze the the Riemann sum using trapeze trapezoids will overestimate the uh, the actual integrals. The same is true even if we have uh, a decreasing concave up function. So to answer that question, since f prime is positive, f is concave up. And the trapezoidal Riemann sum will overestimate um, the, the actual answer. Definite. Right. Overestimate. To overestimate the definite integral. Therefore, we can say that w whatever this value is, it will be less than or equal to. I guess there's a, there's a some rare circumstances where it could be equal to. So it, it is it is no more though than 57 halves. So uh, we've looked at some, some examples and videos and had a lot of discussion here in the, these series of videos here about Riemann sums and how to calculate them. But it is absolutely key that you're able to understand why it is that way. And we're able to, under, you know, to put all the, uh, the, the concepts together, like in this example. As always, thank you for watching. Ask for help if you need it. And have a wonderful day.